Good morning and welcome to this service of morning prayer. We are from now on going to be holding our services from my study um, due to the church um, closing um, even for private prayer. I'm going to read again from Jesus calling this morning. Taste and see that I am good. The more intimately you experience me, the more convinced you become of my goodness. I am the living one who sees you and longs to participate in your life. I am training you to find me in each moment and to be a channel of my loving presence. Sometimes my blessings come to you in mysterious ways, through pain and trouble. At such times you can know my goodness only through your trust in me. Understanding will fail you, but trust will keep you close to me. Thank me for the gift of my peace, a gift of such immense proportions that you cannot fathom its depth or breadth. When I appeared to my disciples after the resurrection, it was peace that I communicated first of all. I knew this was their deepest need, to calm their fears and clear their minds. I also speak peace to you, for I know your anxious thoughts. Listen to me. Tune out other voices so that you can hear me more clearly. I designed you to dwell in peace all day, every day. So draw near to me and receive my peace. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And so our psalm this morning is Psalm 54. Save me, O God, by your name, and vindicate me by your power. Hear my prayer, O God, give heed to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless seek after my life. They have not set God before them. But behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who upholds my life. May evil rebound on those who lie in wait for me. Destroy them in your faithfulness. An offering of a free heart will I give you, and praise your name, O Lord, for it is gracious. For he has delivered me out of all my trouble, and my eye has seen the downfall of my enemies. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So our first reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 7, beginning at verse 1. Then the Lord God said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and the pair of animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the air, also male and female, to keep their kind alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on earth for forty days and for forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. Noah was six hundred years old when the waters came upon the earth, and Noah with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives went into the ark to escape the waters of the flood. 
of clean animals and of animals that are not clean and of birds and of everything that creeps on the ground two and two male and female went into the ark with Noah as God had commanded and after seven days the waters of the flood came upon the earth in the six hundredth year of Noah's life in the second month on the seventeenth day of the month on that day all the fountains of the great deep burst forth and the windows of the heavens were opened the rain fell on the earth for forty days and for forty nights. On the very same day Noah with his sons, Shem and Ham and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons entered the ark, they and every wild animal of every kind, and all domestic animals of every kind, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, and every bird of every kind, every bird, every winged creature, they went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The flood continued for forty days on the earth, and the waters increased, and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters swelled and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the face of the waters. The waters swelled so mightily on the earth, that all the high mountains under the whole heavens were covered, and the waters swelled above the mountains, covering them fifteen cubits deep, and all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds, domestic animals, wild animals, all swarming creatures that swarm on the earth, and all human beings. Everything on dry land, in whose nostrils was the breath of life, died. He blotted out every living thing that was on the face of the ground human beings and animals and creeping things and birds of the air they were blotted out from the earth only noah was left and those that were with him in the ark and the water swelled on the earth for 150 days i have given you as a light to the nations and i have called you in righteousness Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Our second reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Philippians. I want you to know, beloved, that what has happened to me has actually helped to spread the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to everyone that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers and sisters, having been made confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, dare to speak the word with greater boldness and without fear. Some proclaim Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. These proclaim Christ out of love, knowing that I have been put here for the defence of the gospel. The others proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but intending to increase my sufferings in my imprisonment. What does it matter? Just this, that Christ is proclaimed in every way, whether out of false motives or true, and in that I rejoice. Yes, I will continue to rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will result in my deliverance. It is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be put to shame in any way, but that my speaking with all boldness, Christ will be exalted now, as always, in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me living is Christ, and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labour for me, and I do not know which to prefer. I am hard pressed between the two, for my desire is to depart and to be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you, since I am convinced of this, 
I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent from you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. For I have called you by name. You are mine. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. We say the Benedictus together. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. So let us pray. Loving Lord Jesus, on the cross you revealed the Father's heart. As we lift high the cross, may we never be ashamed of its message of salvation. Give grace to your church to proclaim your glory. We pray especially this day for our bishops, Jonathan and Christopher. Lord Jesus, you confront our fears and expose the secrets of our hearts. Lighten the path of those to whom we give the responsibility of government. May we honour that which is true and right. Lord Jesus, Moses gave the sign of the serpent for healing. Bless all those involved in pharmaceutical research, those who are working tirelessly to produce vaccines and medicines and cures for all types of illness. Lord, you reached out to all who came to you by day and by night. Hear our prayers for all in need of your healing touch. We pray especially this day for Mark McClurg and Tony Willis. Send forth your word and we shall be restored to wholeness in you. Lord Jesus, you are rich in mercy and we all depend on your grace alone to save us. In this hope we commend to you all who have died. Hold your cross before us, that we may have eternal life. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defence, 
may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.